Hello everyone, welcome back to Exademy Redefining Education. My name is Prabhash Kumar and I am teaching you Engineering Mathematics. We are still in the first chapter which is Basic Concepts of Engineering Mathematics and in this Basic Concepts we have entered into lesson number 13 which is Analytic Geometry. And in this Analytic Geometry we are seeing this a particular topic today which is Hyperbola. So let's get started. So what are the things that we have already covered in analytic geometry? We have covered two dimensional coordinate systems, straight line, circle, conic sections, parabola, ellipse and this is our second last topic for this particular subtopic which is analytic geometry which is hyperbola. So let's start. So first I will define what a hyperbola is as we have already defined parabola ellipse in the previous video. Similarly we will be defining hyperbola in the terms of locus. So how to define this? Before defining just see what a hyperbola is. See this diagram. See these two green curves as you can see. This right green curve and this left green curve as you can see. These two green curves are called as your hyperbola. Okay so this is your hyperbola. This is your hyperbola and whatever the things are there we will We'll discuss more in detail. So let's start. So the locus of a point P whose distance from a fixed point F1 and F2 bears a constant ratio E greater than 1 to its distance from a fixed line is called a hyperbola. So again the same thing in the same manner we are defining hyperbola in the terms of locus. So just imagine you have a point P somewhere here. So if you are measuring the distance from this line that is from this vertical line and if you are measuring the same distance if you are measuring the distance from this particular focus so this length and this length will bear a ratio and this ratio is called as the eccentricity okay and this eccentricity will always be greater than 1. Moreover, this ratio will always bear a constant one. Why? Because if you take any point somewhere here, so if you measure this length and if you measure this length, again the ratio will remain same. If you if your point is somewhere here and if you are measuring length from here and, he, and this point, so again this ratio is going to remain same and that ratio is called the eccentricity. That is the meaning. Okay. So what are the things here? Now see this general equation for this hyperbola. So this is x square by a square minus y square by b square equals to 1. Is it similar to that of ellipse? Yes. In ellipse the equation was what? x square by a square plus y square by b square equals to 1. But here the sign is negative. Right. Now as you can see that there are so many things inside. So first one we will be seeing is transverse axis. So A, A dash. Can you find A? So this is A and this is A dash. So if you connect these two points, you will get a line and this axis is called as the transverse axis. So this horizontal axis is called as your transverse axis. Moreover, there is a conjugate axis which is a vertical axis perpendicular to the transverse axis. So B, B dash axis is your conjugate axis. Got it? Now if you measure this length. Now before that see here this point is called the vertex which is a comma 0. This point is called the focus and this point is the point of directrix. Moreover this point is called the center. This point is the point of directrix. This point is the point of vertex. This point is the point of focus. Okay. Now if this is center so its coordinate will be 0 comma 0. This point is directrix. So this coordinate will be a by e comma 0. Here the uh, vertex coordinate is a comma 0 and the focus coordinate is a e comma 0. Similarly likewise we have on the negative side minus a by minus a by e comma 0 and then for vertex we have minus a comma 0 and for focus we have minus a e comma 0. Got it? Now these two vertical lines are called the directrix. So equation you know very well how to derive the equation for this that is x equals to minus a by e and here also we have x equals to a by e. So this is on the positive side, this is on the negative side. Now these points are called the vertex that is a point and a dash are called the vertex. b and b dash are called the co-vertex. Got it? Now moreover we have the length that is 2a. Length of what? Length of transverse axis. Now if you measure this that is a dash a or a a dash. So this total length is what? 2 a. Why? Because if you measure from this 0 point to this point you will get A and if you measure from this point to this point you will get A. So when you do the total you will get 2A. Similarly from this point center to the co-vertex so we have B and from this center to this co-vertex we have B. So if you measure this total we have got 2B. Got it? So the length of the transverse axis is 2A, length of the conjugate axis is 2B. Now these two points as I, as I already told we have got foci which is F1 and F2. Now what is this latest rectum? Just like in ellipse 
and we had uh, called something called latest rectum. Similarly, here also we are having a latest rectum which is LL dash and this is given by 2B square by A. So, if you measure this length, so this length can be calculated using 2B square by A. Got it. Now, how will you find this eccentricity? The value of this eccentricity can be calculated using the simple formula which is root under A square plus B square by A. Got it. So, this value will always be, always be, always be greater than 1. Remember this. So, if this eccentricity value is coming less than 1, so then it is an ellipse. If it is becoming equal to 1, that means it is a circle and if it is greater than 1, so that means it's a hyperbola. I hope you got the entire picture very clear in your brain. Now, equation of transverse axis. So, the, again the repetition. So, how will you, what will be the equation of the transverse axis? Which is my transverse axis? This x axis is my transverse axis. So, what is the equation of x axis? Obviously, it's y equals to 0. So, that's why I have written y equals to 0, which is x axis. So, what is the equation of the conjugate axis? The conjugate axis is y axis. So, this, this is your conjugate axis. This is a y axis. So, its equation is x equals to 0. Got it? So, y is y axis. Now, vertices, what are the vertices? We have uh, two vertex and two co vertex. So, vertices we have a comma 0 and a dash is minus a comma 0. So, here this is a comma 0 and this is minus a comma 0. Moreover, we have two co vertex which is 0 comma b and 0 comma minus b. Now, equation of direct rays just now we have say, seen that x equals to plus minus a by a. So, this is the equation of this is one directrix, this is another directrix, this is a negative directrix, this is a positive directrix. So, the equation of this is x equals to minus a by a. The equation of positive directrix is x equals to a by a. Now, similarly, we will be defining a parametric equation for a hyperbola. Just like in the third variable that is t variable, we can write x and y. So, x can be written as a sec t and y can be written as b tan t. So, remember again and again I am telling this parametric equations are very important for your calculus part. So, you should remember what is parametric equation of ellipse, parametric equation of circle, parametric equation of hyperbola. Okay. Moreover, any branch of a hyperbola can, uh, can also be defined as a curve when the distance is from any point. So, again I have drawn this hyperbola and I will show you uh, more in detail. So, fixed point that is focus and the fixed straight line that is the directrix are always in the same ratio. What is telling? Say suppose you are considering any point here. Now, if you measure distance, this horizontal distance and if you measure this inclined distance from this focus point and this point, so this is going to maintain a same ratio. That doesn't mean that this length and this length will be equal. No, this length and this length will not be equal. Okay, what is telling is telling that this ratio will be equal throughout. That if you take point here, so if you measure this length and if you measure this length, so whatever the ratio that you'll get, the same ratio will get here, the same ratio will get at here, same ratio will get here same ratio here. Got it? So, that ratio is called the eccentricity and for a hyperbola it is always greater than 1. Now, this is the complete picture of a complete hyperbola as you can see. So, here this is hyperbola, this two curves as you can see, this is hyperbola, this is a vertex, this is also a vertex, this is focus, this is also focus, this is co-vertex, this is co-vertex and the straight lines that you can see here. Okay, so these will continue infinitely, this will continue infinitely, but this this curve will not cut this asymptote. This curve will not cut this asymptote, okay? So, it will continue infinitely. So, this we have got two straight lines, that is two st uh, asymptotes, okay, passing through this. So, this is the complete overview picture of hyperbola. Now, this is very important. So, if you have an hyperbola of this format, that is x minus h whole square by a square minus y minus k whole square by b square equals to 1. And if you have got this another format that is y minus k whole square by b square minus x minus h whole square by a, a square equals to 1. So, for this particular format, these all things are valid and for this particular format, these all things are valid. So, what will be the center? Center remains the same. Whether you write this format or this format, center remains the same which is h comma k. Now, if you are writing this format that is x minus h whole square by a square minus y minus k whole square by b square equals to 1. For this particular case, your hyperbola is going to open left or right. Let me show you. Hyperbola will going to open either left or right just like this. Either it will open towards left or it will open towards right. Got it? Now, if your equation is of this format, then in this case, your hyperbola is going to open either upwards or downwards. That is only the difference in writing. So, if x is coming first, then your hyper hyperbola will open left or right. If y is coming first, then in that case, your hyperbola is going to open up or down. Got it? Similarly, we have got vertices. So, this is the vertex for this particular case and this is the vertex for this particular case. Okay. Now, 
also we have some asymptotes that is plus minus b by a and plus minus b by a so this is plus minus b by a plus minus b by a so as a slope of asymptotes now equations we have y equals to k plus minus b by a into x minus h and y equals to k plus minus b by a into x minus h got it so these are the different formats remember this take the snapshot mug it up do whatever you want because this is very important for sketching the hyperbola so as you can see that I, I I have drawn the same thing that is x minus h whole square by a square minus y minus k whole square by b, do, 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 all these things. So the, here we'll be having a hyperbola in this case in this way and here we'll be having a hyperbola in this manner up or down. Here we'll be having left or right. Clear? Now this is your vertical transfer. Can you identify which is vertical transverse axis? This is my vertical transverse axis. Okay. Now this is my conjugate axis. Now earlier in the previous case, so in this case, this was your transverse axis and this was your horizontal. This was your conjugate axis. Got it? Now in this case, this is your transverse axis. This vertical line is your transverse axis and this is your conjugate axis. Same thing is there. So if y is coming first, you will be getting this type of curve opening up and down. And if x is coming first, then your curve will be either left or right. Rest of the things remains the same. That is your equation of the asymptotes, the coordinates of the vertex, the coordinates of the focus, the coordinates of the directrix. You can easily calculate all these things now. Now let's take an example and sketch the graph that is x minus 3 whole square by 25 minus y plus 1 whole square by 49 equals to 1. So in the step 1 what we're going to do is look at the given equation and decide whether it will open left or right or up and down. Okay, so as you can see x is coming first so here the hyperbola will be opening towards left or right. Got it? Moreover, we have to probably find the center point. The center point will be found using hk. So h is 3, k is minus 1. So if you compare here, so if you compare from this equation that is h equals to 3 and k is equal to um, minus 1. Okay, so y minus of minus 1. So k is minus 1. So you got h as 3 and k as minus 1. So center point is 3 comma minus 1. You need to find the vertices. How will you find the vertices? This is the formula is plus a comma k and h minus a comma k. So simply substitute here. You will get the values of the coordinate points for the vertices. Now how will you find the slope of the asymptotes? Very simple. Plus minus b by a. You know the value of b. You know the value of a. Simply substitute here. You will get the value of plus minus 7 by 5. So this is the slope of asymptotes. Now equation of asymptotes, very important. So this is the equation of asymptotes. So two equations will be getting one in plus and one in minus. So y equals to minus of plus 7 by 5 into x minus 3 and y equals to minus of minus 7 by 5 into x minus 3. Got it? So collect all data and sketch the graph starting from asymptote. Okay, so we'll be collecting all data and start. When you sketch the hyperbola, you'll get this type of hyperbola. These are the asymptotes. These are the two asymptotes we have drawn according to the equation that we have found. We have found the vertex points, everything. So you'll get this type of hyperbola. So if you want to practice, then let's celebrate our learning. If you have really understood what I have taught, then please do co copy this question in your notebook. Solve this. Make the graph, take the snapshot and drop down the solution to this WhatsApp number. Okay, official WhatsApp number of Exademy, right? So, see you in the next video. We'll be meeting up with some more interesting uh, lectures. Till then, stay connected with us. Take care. Bye-bye.